Autofill, one of the most dreadful words the league community has ever seen. It's not fun when you get autofilled, nor is it fun when someone else on your team gets autofilled. And if you're one of those players who values a hard-fought win, then it's not fun when the enemy team has autofills because the skill difference diminishes the value of the win. For me anyway, it doesn't feel good to lose or win a game as a result of one team having a 70% win rate Rengar 1 trick while the other team's jungler has never played the role before. Speaking of autofill jungle, that brings us to our topic for today. Support and jungle are historically the two most autofilled in the game, which is interesting given how they fundamentally contrast from each other. But of the two, I definitely think autofill jungle is the more contentious topic for debate. We live in a time where the phrase jungle diff is a staple in everyday parlance. League has never been a very beginner-friendly game, essentially demanding you to learn via trial by scorching fire, which can be a Herculean task unless you have a friend show you the ropes. While it can be somewhat easy to learn the basic fundamentals of top, mid, ADC, and support, Jungle is a far more unforgiving barrier to entry, compounded by the latest habitual tendency to attribute the loss of a game to the jungler getting diffed on. But why is jungle so frequently autofilled? Following the great reception of my top and bot lane videos, the third episode will be featuring jungle's main problem, why it's so often the target for blame, and why it feels like no one wants to learn or play it. A while back, I made a video on how jungle went from a rogue strategy that only a few champions are even able to remotely pull off to arguably the most important role in determining the outcome of a match, at least in the early game. Though the laning roles are primarily expected to, you know, stay in their lane, accumulate gold and experience, and face off against a lane opponent, the capabilities of a jungler are more open-ended, with a higher potential for influencing the map. Jungle is no longer a second support role like it used to be over a decade ago. These days, you have to respect and fear the enemy jungler just as much as you would the laners. In light of the absence of a tutorial for junglers, it's by far the most difficult role to get into, as the goals and expectations of the role are just too different from the others. Attempts have been made to make the jungle more accessible for new players. To name a few, plants were added to centralize things a bit. Their advent made it so champions can have access to tools for easier jungling. Blast Gun for traversability, Scryer Bloom for vision control, so on and so forth. Beyond that, jungle camps remain much easier to clear. Though it took half a dozen iterations to do so, the jungle items we currently have make it so just about any champion that isn't a support can become a jungler in some way shape or form, with the pets providing AoE damage and sustain. Beyond that, scores of champions have had their abilities buffed to deal bonus damage to monsters for the sake of a faster clear. As a result, the jungle now has an extensive and comprehensive list of viable candidates, from assassins to tanks to fighters to even marksmen and enchanters. In spite of the efforts to make the jungle less niche and esoteric, to this day, it statistically remains the most frequently autofilled role in the game, implying players do not wish to play the role or at least, they have a preference against playing it, ironically leading to many games consisting of an autofilled jungler on one or both teams, which I think we can all agree is the one role that should never get autofilled due to how relevant it is in the early to mid game. Opinions differ greatly when it comes to the very concept of autofill. A faction of players argue it's a necessary evil to avoid protracted queue times. I remember back in Season 6, when we had Dynamic Q, you could potentially run into queue times lasting upwards of 10 minutes to sometimes half an hour. On the other side, players believe it's better to wait 10 minutes for a game if it means all 5 members of your team are in the role they're most experienced at, instead of a 3 minute queue for half your team to not even know what they're doing. Regardless of your stance on it, autofill jungle is just objectively not a fun experience. For the jungler and the laners, you essentially have to roll the die on whether your autofill jungler knows a little bit more about the role than your opponent's autofill jungler, or they have at least a modicum of jungle fundamentals. So, what are the reasons pushing people from wanting to play jungle that cause it to be autofilled so often? I would say it boils down to two factors the ambiguous win condition of the role itself and the social dynamics surrounding it. In other words, it's an equal combination of gameplay and psychological challenges. As stated, the jungle has been made a lot more accessible and universal to where champs of all classes can be played and find at minimum viable usage. A consequence of this is that it gave junglers the same access to gold, experience, and items as their lane counterpart, only junglers have much more freedom and traversability around the map, effectively meaning they get to roam much earlier than laners can. By trying to make it less onerous for prospective players, they raise the agency of the role, thus raising the theoretical influence junglers have in the minds of players, which in turn makes the role harder to play, as the barrier to entry was lowered but the expectations from the players themselves were raised. Top, mid, bot, and support by comparison have far less expectations on a conceptual level. The basic understanding of each role is to once again stay in their respective lane, farm minions, experience, amass gold, and purchase items to then start exerting pressure later on. Scoring kills against the enemy laners can expedite this process, putting you in a favorable position as you enter the mid to late game. Hypothetically, if there was no jungler, the essential experience of the laners wouldn't really change. For the most part, it's a contest between you and your opponent. Who can manage the wave better, who can score better trades, who can play better neutral, and so on. The point of the jungler is to stir the pot so to speak, to serve as the X factor, the independent variable that can change the outcome of a lane, either push a neutral lane to a winning one, push a winning one to an even more winning one, or perhaps attempt to rescue a losing lane. 
Whatever form that takes, the jungler's existence is to be the wild card for the team. Naturally, this makes the actual goals of the jungler rather unclear. What is the goal of top mid and bot lane to win lane? How did they win lane? By being in better circumstances than the opposing laner. That can entail being up in levels, being ahead in teams, maybe taking first tower to create more accessibility for the team. What is the goal of the jungler though? The surface level answer would be to do a better job jungling than the other guy, but how is that illustrated? That's the issue. In the jungle, there's no set framework for how to quote unquote dip your opponent. The more open-ended nature of the role creates an environment where there are far more ways to skin a cat than the three laners, since they're not confined to one spot. We could take the win condition of laners, that being to be in a more advantageous position than their opponent, and apply it here as well. Now that junglers are carries and not supports, you could say the goal of a jungler is the same as a laner, to have more items, more levels, what have you. But it goes beyond that. Junglers can achieve this by power farming, clearing camps at record time to score level and item advantage against their respective jungler. They can also do this by ganking lanes, scoring kill golden experience to generate their fortune as well. Doing so also enables the laner they're ganking for to push for advantage themselves. Even if the farming jungler has more golden experience than the ganking one through the latter's gank pressure, they could actually have produced more value for the team than the farming one. Alternatively, a jungler could accrue advantage by scoring neutral objectives like Void Grubs, Rift Held, and the first few dragons, which may not produce immediate value, but can make all the difference in the mid to late game. Ordinarily, a single dragon wouldn't be cause for concern. Individual drakes these days are so insignificant in stats that you can afford to give one up if it's not convenient to contest it. That is, unless the enemy team already has three dragons, suddenly a trivial objective becomes a possibly game-ending one if you relinquish it to the enemy team. You might have been the more active jungler in terms of early game pressure, but the enemy jungler outplayed you by setting the stage for a stronger late game with Dragon Soul or faster sieges of Void Grubs. Therein lies the challenge of jungle. There's no definitive formula for how to win the game. Not only do win conditions differ from one champion to another, but they can differ from game to game. Say you're playing Hecarim, one game the win condition might be to gank as often as possible and snowball that way. Another game it might be more prudent for you to flame horizon the enemy jungler. It takes a lot of experience, merely to know which goal you should go for, and sometimes that goal can change midway through a match. You might start out by ganking a ton, but if circumstances deteriorate for your team, you'll have to decide if you should hang back and farm to mid game, or if you should keep trying for more ganks. You may not know what to do, since it's not abundantly clear what to do. The jungle is weird in that everything works, but because of that, it's hard to ascertain what's the most effective way to exert pressure as a jungler. It is a perpetually ongoing process that jungle may spend thousands, if not tens of thousands of games before they even begin to master, so you can imagine how intimidating it might be to pick up the role. I'd prefer to avoid saying this, but sometimes jungle diff is decided on sheer luck, while infrequent, there is a non-negligible amount of games that have the autofill first time jungler completely overshadow the 5 year jungle main. Not because the autofill is secretly a jungle prodigy, rather they just happen to choose the correct course of action for that specific game, where AFK farming and taking objectives was the right play instead of ganking. Junglers don't really decide what the win condition is from game to game. It depends on the type of players they have on their teams. One game you might have a team that wants to play slow and steady, so you should focus on slow and steady yourself. Another game you might have a hyper aggro top and mid laner roaming for 3 man 4 man ganks nonstop, so you should do the same and be aggressive. You might be playing a champion heavily reliant on scoring ganks, but not be allowed to play to that win condition because your team is full of players that want to have a safe laning phase. Above all else, junglers have to be adaptable, and you can only develop that skill through years and years of jungle experience. In essence, jungle is a catch-22 role of Lee. For you to play jungle, you need jungle experience, but for you to get jungle experience, you have to play jungle. Normally that would be fine, assuming you can handle working in a hostile environment for long stretches of time. Players are quick to point fingers at the jungler for the loss of a game on account of the jungler's many ways in which they can exert pressure. Whether it's true or not, laners have this mindset that they can only do so much during the first 10 to 20 minutes of a game, as they have to acquire items and experience before they can start roaming around the map and fighting. Not to mention, they still have to match the opposing laner. They can't just abandon that and start roaming around the map level 1, you'd be reported for griefing if you did that. Junglers however can, and are supposed to start getting stuff done. Their quote unquote laning phase is basically the first clear, and that's about it. From there on, you could do whatever the hell you want to acquire your advantage, so prevailing wisdom has the expectation that if and when a jungler loses, it's as a result of them wasting too much time or being at the wrong place at the wrong time. What's more is that the consequences of a jungler losing to their opponent have a significantly higher chance of causing collateral damage to the rest of their team. Up in top lane you might get solo killed once or twice, but the enemy top laner is still preoccupied with you. If they leave lane to exert pressure, that gives you the opportunity to catch up and farm or even push back by taking tower plates, so they might feel obligated to stay in lane. Min lane you see this all the time. Enemy Anivia scores 2 kills on Katarina, but that doesn't mean she can just meander around through the jungle since Katarina and her jungler can still blindside her, so she might spend the early game in lane the whole time while Katarina roams and scores a triple kill bot lane. 
If the enemy bot laner scores a lead in the early game, your solo laners don't have to worry about the ramifications of that, at least until you lose bot tower and they rotate mid or top, not unless the enemy support plays someone like Bard or Pike who roam non-stop anyway. On the other hand, if the enemy jungler scores a lead in the early game, all three lanes are now at risk, as you have to be even more cautious of being ganked. So if the enemy jungler ganks bot lane and scores a double kill, your jungler now has to navigate an increasingly more dangerous jungle out of fear of being invaded, while top and mid lane have to contend with the possibility that a 2-0 Lee Sin is coming for them next. This makes it extremely likely for this situation to escalate beyond your control. On paper, the jungler can do so much that one has to assume if they have the means of doing so, they will do it. Junglers can exert the newfound lead by ganking more lanes, but you still have to respect that they'll threaten neutral objectives or that they'll power farm to snowball even faster. All those aspects of the map are now compromised, as opposed to only lanes and the surrounding vicinity being threatened if the enemy laner gets a lead. These days, the number of games decided based on coordination between lanes and the jungler are becoming more prolific. More often than not, your team's jungler might get dipped on not because the enemy jungler was better, but because their solo laners rotated faster than yours. In a way, junglers have simultaneously the most agency in the game and the least. They get to make the moves that decide the course of a match going forward. Conversely, they might spend the entire game being unable to do anything for their team since the enemy jungler is always backed up by their support or laners having priority. It results in a lose-lose situation where your laners are begging you for help and assistance, but you're being pinned down by the enemy jungler, narrowing the options you can take to mount a comeback. The worst part is, no one can replace the jungler. If top lane falls behind, it can be compensated by the other laners doing well, but if the jungler falls behind, even if all three lanes are even or winning, that team is permanently at a disadvantage entering them into late game, since only the jungler can securely secure objectives. If the top laner feeds, you can send the mid laner to side lane while the top laner makes up for their mistake in team fights. If the bot laner feeds, no one cares, cause bot laners isn't all the time. Even supports can do a lousy job establishing vision control and their team can make up for it by buying control wards and using trinkets themselves but no one can replace or even supplement the jungler. If the enemy team steals Baron, from most people's perspective, it is always the jungler's fault if that happens. Why? Because only the jungler has smite. No one thinks to blame the mid laner for leaving Baron pit instead of finishing the objective before turning. No one thinks to blame the support for not zoning away the enemy jungler. Everyone's first instinct is to blame the jungler since no one else has smite. By extension, people's first instinct is to blame the jungler for most things. Top laner gets pushed under tower and dove, apparently it's not the top laner's fault for taking bad trades and getting put into that position. It is the jungler's fault for not ganking the enemy laner who's overextended. Because the jungler is the wild card, players have a tendency to treat them as a crutch. Sure, there are many times where the jungler was in the wrong for clearly ignoring an opportunity to score an advantage for the team, but laners do sometimes have a bad habit of using the jungler as a cop-out to escape personal accountability. That's ultimately why so few players want to play jungle and why it's autofilled so often. Players have to take on so much responsibility without any guidance, and the burden of proof and execution always falls on them. It's the one role you cannot autopilot, making it the most mentally exhausting to play as well. Alrighty, that wraps up my jungle episode. If you have any thoughts of your own about the role, you're welcome to share them in the comments down below. Apart from that, if you guys enjoyed the video, it would be great if you could leave a like and subscribe. Consider following my Twitter at Varsvarm, joining my Discord server, and checking out my episodes on top and bot lane if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.